Hello, everybody. It's time for Children's Church. Good morning, and thank you so much for joining us today at Broadway for Children's Church. I hope you've had a great week and you've been able to get outside and enjoy that sunshine. Let's start with a prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for this day. Thank you for all the many blessings you always give us. I pray, Lord, that you would be with each family that's watching today and that you would help us to learn what you want us to learn and to be able to practice what you have for us. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Okay, it's time for that Bible verse. Put it up there, Mr. Monk. And it says, Love each other as I have loved you. And that comes from John 15, 12. Okay, let's stand up and let's try our motions. First thing we're going to do, remember, is we're going to give ourselves a hug. We say, love each other. Then we're going to point up as I, and then we're going to point to ourselves, have loved you, and that's from John 15, 12. Now let's do it all together. Here we go. Love each other as I have loved you. John 15, 12. Do y'all want to try that grandma style? Let's do it. We haven't done that in a long, long time. Okay. Now, to do it grandma style, I'm going to pull my glasses down. And since I am a granny, I can do this without offending anybody, I hope. Here we go. Love each other as I have loved you. John Okay, I will see you in just a few minutes. Get ready to sing and watch Ollie.
know what time it is. It's time to hear a story full of wonder. There's so much fun we'll have learning together. So let's go down, go down to the clubhouse with Holly and his friends. Let's go down, down, down to the clubhouse where wonder never ends at the Wonder Clubhouse. I'm Lucy, and you're just in time for the grand opening of the Clubhouse Car Wash. The brushes really move like in a real car wash. Let's see how many cars we have to wash today. Count them with me. One, two, three, four, and five. Are you ready for them to go through the car wash? If you are, shout, go cars, go! Go cars, go! Wow, that was loud. Here we go. Wow, that was so much fun. Look how shiny and clean they are. Oh. Ho! It's Ollie! Hello, Lucy! Ho! Ho! Washing cars, are you? It's so much fun to make them bright and shiny and clean! Washing cars is fun! It's true! I know a story about washing, too! Listen to this! Just follow me through! Ho! Ho! Follow me through! Hola, friends. I'm Luis, the handyman. So happy to see you today. Check out this car. It belongs to my friend Arturo. I'm helping him fix it because the wheels aren't working. Oh, <laughs> and that's what you do to be a good friend. You help them. In fact, that reminds me of a story. You want to help me build it? Great! Let's put it on the story fence. Hammers up, little builders. Ready? Uno, dos, tres, hammer! Great job, little helpers. You can put your hammers down. Now, we just need our story tools. Yep, we have everything we need. Okay. So today's true story from the Bible begins with Jesus. It was the night he had all his friends, the disciples, with him at dinner. His friend John was there, and Matthew, and Peter. They all were at the table. Then Jesus took a towel and knelt down by his friends. Do you know what Jesus was doing? He was about to wash his friend's feet. His friends had been walking around dusty roads all day, and their feet were dirty. <laughs> Everyone say, ew! Ready? <gasps> ew! <laughs> yep, talk about a stinky job. <laughs> now, we need to fill up the bowl with water. Can you guys take your pretend buckets and help me fill the bowl with water? Ready? One, two, three. Ah, good job. <laughs> now Jesus has water. Then Jesus washed his friend's feet. Huh. Can you believe that? Jesus is so important. He is God's son. Why would someone so important wash his friend's feet? Hmm. Because he wanted to show his friends that he loved them. And you're never too important to love others by doing something for them, like washing their feet. Everyone say, wow! Ready? Wow! Jesus is a good friend. <laughs> hmm, let's think for a minute. 
If we wanted to be a good friend like Jesus, what could we do to show love to other people around us? What if you're playing outside and your neighbor friend wants to play on your favorite scooter? Do you let them? <laughs> yes, you share your favorite scooter. That is being a good friend. What if there's a long line to get a turn in the bouncy house, but there's a little kid behind you who's really excited to bounce. Do you let them go in front of you? <laughs> yes, you let them go in front of you. That is being a good friend. You already know lots of ways to be a good friend. So start your engines and let's go, go, go and love people like Jesus did. So let's be good friends. Hey there, Ollie. Tell me, who can love like Jesus? I can love like Jesus. Yes, it's true. Now let's hear it from you. Tell me, who can love like Jesus? I can love like Jesus. That's the truth, friends. You better believe it. Adios. So there's your story, and it's all true. Jesus loved by being a good friend, and we can be a good friend, too. Thanks, Ollie. Goodbye to you. Who? Who? Wow, even though Jesus is God's son, he got down and washed his friend's dirty feet. We can do kind things for our friends, too. I think I got the story. Did you get it? If you did, say got it. Get it? Got it! Good! This car wash is so cool. I could keep it to myself, but I'm gonna go find my friends and let them play with it too. I'll see you next time. we talked about patience. Patience is waiting for something even when it's hard. Watch these children and see if they can have patience to receive more of what they want. Our next Bible story shows what can happen when we don't have patience and give in to temptation. I'll see you in a little bit. Sit in that chair. All right, here's the deal. Marshmallow, for you. You can either wait, and I'll give you another one if you wait, or you can eat it now. When I come back, I'll give you two, another one, so then you'll have two. But stay in here and stay in the chair till I come back, okay? okay. All right. I'm gonna go do something and then I'll come back. It smells yummy. Oh, it smells really good. So it's up to you. You can have it now or you can wait. Okay? I'll be back. 
stay in the chair, okay? Okay. So I'm gonna leave and then I'll come back, okay? So you can either eat it right now or you can wait. Either way, okay? Okay. How'd you do? Did you do good? You did? Yeah. You wanted to eat it, didn't you? Yeah. So did I tell you to give you another one? Okay, now you can have both. You need them. It's me, Graham, 
And today, I'm serving up a delicious dish that's gonna make you jealous. Safety first. Double chocolate chocolate chip cookies. Mmm. Mm. Taste test time. I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm not gonna eat these now. They're way too hot. I'm gonna have to wait to enjoy this chewy, gooey deliciousness. Which means I'll need patience. Patience is waiting until later for what you want now. It'll be a challenge to wait, but I will do it. Ooh. Do you smell that? Well, no. You wouldn't. <laughs> Let me try and describe the smell for you. Imagine you're walking along a beach made entirely of chocolate. The chocolate ocean is waving nearby. And as you breathe in, the air is a warm chocolate breeze. That's what it feels like to be in the presence of these cookies. Maybe just one bite. No, no cookies. Oh, I've got to think about something else. Light, vegetable oil, mannequin, crock pot, cookies. No! Ah! <laughs> Time to put these away. There. Now it will be easy to wait. I can still smell them. And today's story, we'll hear about a group of people who are finding it very hard to wait. And they knew better. I'll be here when you get back. The Bible, it's 66 books of history, stories, letters, and poetry that fit together to form God's one big story. The epic adventure of how he created us and loves us so much that he made a way to rescue us. As we travel through the Bible, from Genesis to Revelation, we discover people who met God and found their lives changed forever. Now, for an amazing story, inspired by the book of Exodus, chapter 32, verses 1 through 35. For hundreds of years, God's people lived as slaves in Egypt. They cried out to God, and God rescued them. He led them through the midst of the Red Sea to freedom in the wilderness. And that's where he showed his love and care by providing bread from heaven and water from solid rock. Three months later, God led his people to Mount Sinai where they camped at the foot of the mountain in the desert. Moses was called to by God from the mountain. Say to my people, the Israelites, you have seen for yourselves what I did to Egypt. You saw how I carried you on the wings of eagles and brought you to myself. Now obey me completely. If you do, then out of all the nations, you will be my special treasure. Moses shared God's word with the people. We will do everything the Lord has said. God called Moses to meet with him on the mountaintop. Moses spoke to the elders of the Israelites before he left. Wait here until I come back. My brother Aaron and Hur will stay with you Anyone who has a problem can go to them. Don't sweat it. We got this. No one can come up. The mountain is holy. Noted. I'll see you soon-ish. Have fun storming the mountain. As Moses and his assistant Joshua began to climb the steep slopes, the glory of God settled on Mount Sinai like thick cloud and burning fire. I will give you stone tablets. They contain the law and commandments I have written to teach them. Moses stayed within the cloud on top of Mount Sinai, talking with God for 40 days and nights. Meanwhile, back at the camp, the Israelites were growing restless. I'm so like over this desert camping thing. Yeah, that Moses seems kind of unreliable to me. Yeah, what if he's making up all the God stuff? You know, besides the cloud and the Red Sea and food from heaven and all that. Yeah, he's certainly taking long enough. Hey! Aaron, where's your brother? 
Aaron shrugged and pointed to the cloud that hovered over the mountain. Uh, uh, you know as much as I do. We need someone to really take charge. A god we can see. A god who will lead us. Moses may have brought us out of Egypt, but he's just disappeared. Poof. What are you going to do, Aaron? Aaron was tired of the people's complaining, so he buckled under pressure. Ha <laughs> uh, well, uh, give me all your gold jewelry. Aaron took all the gold the people brought him and melted it down. Then he shaped it into the form of a golden calf. Israel, here is your god who brought you out of Egypt. It's like so shiny. Well, well, when Aaron saw how excited the people were, he built an altar in front of the calf. Tomorrow will be a feast day. So all the next day, the Israelites brought sacrifices to honor a golden calf made out of their own jewelry. The people ate, drank, and danced wildly in front of the statue. Who wants to walk like an Egyptian, huh? Not me. We just got out of there, thanks to this amazing calf. Back on the mountain, in the midst of the cloud, God spoke to Moses. Go down. Your people you brought up out of Egypt have become very sinful. They have turned away from what I commanded. Heartbroken, Moses and Joshua made their way back down the mountain. Moses carried two heavy stone tablets covered with the laws God had given. The two men stopped in their tracks. Wait, is that the sound of war? It's not the sound of winning or losing, that's singing. <sighs> Moses and Joshua picked up their pace, scrambling down the mountainside. As they approached the camp, Moses saw the golden calf, dazzling in the sunlight. The Israelites danced wildly around it. Inconceivable! Moses was so angry, he took the stone tablets and hurled them to the ground. Stop! Stop this at once! The music and dancing stopped. Moses marched right through the crowd, right up to the golden calf. Aaron tried to sheepishly duck away, but Moses spotted him at once. What did these people do to you? How did they make you lead them into such terrible sin? Okay, don't be angry. You know how these people are. They, they said, make us a god to lead us. And? And then they gave me their gold jewelry. And? And I threw it into the fire, and out came this calf. <sighs> Aaron couldn't look his brother in the eye. They both knew the true story. Why didn't you wait for me? The people are running wild. We've, we've become a joke to our enemies. Moses toppled the golden calf into the fire to burn. Then he ground the golden calf into a fine powder and scattered it on the water. Drink it, all of you. This is hard to drink. Oh, oh my stomach feels downright awful. God helped his people over and over, but when they had to wait, they forgot his goodness. They chose their own way. And the consequences weren't so golden. I have a confession to make. I didn't eat the cookies! I had patience! I have another confession to make. Sometimes I don't have patience. No, sometimes I'm more like the Israelites in the story. I trick myself into thinking I can't wait for what I want. Have you ever done that? Have you ever eaten a snack when you weren't supposed to because you couldn't wait until dinner? Have you ever found the secret hiding place for presents because you couldn't wait until your birthday to find out what you got? A lot of us have done those things even though we know better. Maybe instead of tricking ourselves into thinking we can't wait, we can remember what's true. Instead of eating that snack you're not supposed to, remember it spoils your appetite at dinner time. Instead of sneaking around and looking for presents, remember how happy it makes others when they surprise you. And if you're waiting for something big, some pain to go away or sadness to end, remember what God has done in the past. Remember his miracles. Remember his son, Jesus, who died on a cross for us and who came back to life in three days. 
Ask God to help you control what you think. Here is the one thing to remember today. When you have to wait, remember what's true. It sounds easy to control what you think, but really it takes practice. Start now and who knows? Someday you may find yourself on a chocolate beach near a chocolate ocean feeling a warm chocolate breeze. Ew! Chocolate seagull. Well, I don't think I'm hungry anymore. Thank you again for sharing your Sunday with us at Broadway. Let's pray, and then I'll have a joke for you. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for all that you've given to us. I pray that you be with each boy and girl and with each person that's watching and each person at church, that you would help us to learn to have patience, and while we are having patience, to depend on you, to ask you to be with us, and fill us with that peace to know that we are in your hands. Thank you so very much. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Mr. Monk, I'm going to need you to help me with this. This is a knock-knock joke. Knock-knock. Who's there? Annie. Annie who? Anybody there? See you next week. Bye-bye.